Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here let's look at some of the fastest tools that exist. One that allows you to render tons of animated skin meshes, and another one to handle tons of units pathfinding. Yep, you've probably guessed it, these are DOTS assets. That is why they are insanely fast. I just recently finished my DOTS course, teaching you how to use DOTS from start to finish and making an awesome RTS game. There's a free 7 hour course over here on YouTube, and the full course is 17 hours long. DOTS is really awesome, it's insanely fast. It can literally make your code run 200x faster, but right now it does have some limitations. Specifically, it does not support any kind of animation or pathfinding by default. Now, you can build those yourself. In the DOTS course, we do build a custom animation system from scratch, and we also implement flow field pathfinding, so you can spend some time to implement those yourself. Or here, let's look at these really awesome DOTS assets to help plug those gaps. Unity sponsored this video. They're currently running their cyber week sale. Over 400 awesome assets are currently on sale. There's 150 new ones that weren't on sale during the Black Friday sale, and it includes the three assets that we're going to look at here, alongside lots of really awesome ones. I can really recommend a bunch of them, like for example Feel, this is a really excellent asset to help you polish your games. Text Animator is another super awesome one. If your game has text of any kind, then this one will really help it send out. Make your lights look really gorgeous, check out Vometric Lights too. To help you add some satisfying destruction, you can check out Rayfire. For 2D, use the excellent all-in-one sprite shader. Or for any kind of pathfinding, check out the obvious ASAR pathfinding project. One of the assets that we're going to see actually works on top of this one. And my own asset, the Mosker System Pro. That one is also on sale. It's a great way for you to add polish to your game with nice custom animated cursors. You can check out my full asset review playlist. Pretty much all of those assets are currently on sale. So check out the Cyber Week sale linked in the description. And here, let's look at these assets, see how they work and just how fast they are. By the way, remember how you don't have to make your games with full dots or full game objects. You can mix them both. So you can use these super fast dots assets and combine them with your game objects. You can use dots for the performance intensive parts of your game and then use game objects pretty much for the rest. So always remember you can mix them. One of the main limitations with dots is how it does not support animations. For example, in my dots course, in there I created a custom animation system from scratch. That one is based on dynamically swapping meshes. So kind of like a sprite sheet animation system. But obviously it would be ideal to have normal skin meshes. So let's first look at Rukanka. This has to does exactly that. It basically makes the regular animator work directly inside dots. It has almost 100% feature parity. It is insanely fast, easily supports hundreds of skin meshes animating. And thankfully, it's actually pretty easy to use. So here I've installed the package in this project. I've got this simple humanoid character over here, and it has an animator. This is a normal game object, and there it is, just playing a perfectly normal animation. However, if I now take this character and I put it inside a dot subscene in order to convert it into an entity, if I now try, and yep, it no longer works. Dots does not do anything with an animator, it does not support skin meshes, so this is where this asset really helps. Over here on the main object, let's add a component, let's search for rig, and you have this one, the rig definition authoring, let's add this component. We can leave with the default so we can get the rig config source directly from the animator. Then the other thing we need is also a different shader. The way this asset works is by modifying vertices through a shader, so for that we need a custom shader that does support deformation. So let's go into our folder, let's create, make a new shader graph, and make a new URP shader. I'm gonna call it the deformation shader. And if here we have it, and this one is really simple, we just need to add a node, let's add this one, yep, the compute deformation node. Then over here, we just need to connect these, so connect the position, the normal, and the tangent. And then whatever else you need in your shaders, like for something super basic, you really just need the texture. So let's just do a simple texture 2D. And on the properties, let's create texture 2D for our main text. And then over here, let's just grab a texture and pass that into the base color. So yep, super basic shader. Again, the only important thing is that it has this one. That's what is actually going to move the vertices in order to actually trigger the animation. So if that's it, let's save the shader. And now we just need to use it. So inside our character on the skin mesh renderer, we are using some kind of material. And then over here, let's just modify the shader. Go inside shade graphs and let's use our nice deformation shader. Let it compile. And if there it is, everything still looks exactly the same. We just assigned a brand new shader, and over here next to the animator, we add this component. Then also over here on the animator, let's set it to always animate. And yep, there it is, the character is nicely animated. Again, importantly, is how this is actually animated directly inside a dot subscene. This is an entity, it is being rendered with the entity's rendering. So the whole thing exists inside of the dot swirl, and the animation is playing perfectly. Alright, awesome! So that's really how easy it is to work with animated meshes with this asset. Just a 10 second setup and everything already works. Then the other obvious thing you're going to need to do with any kind of animation is modifying the animation in runtime. So here on my super simple animator, I just added both animations and then I just added the parameter is talking and then I made the transition based on that parameter. So if it's talking is true, then it's going to trigger this one. If not, it's going to trigger this one. So now of course the question is how do we modify this parameter through a dot system? Let's see how to do that. 
let's create a brand new dot system. So create a new, go inside the entities, create a new I system. I'm gonna call it dots animation testing system. And if now here, here we have the standard bot play code for any kind of dot system. So let's just do all of this. And over here we can do a query. So system API, let's do a query. And first let's actually query for our character. So over here for this one, I'm just going to add this simple tag component. There it is, literally just an empty tag component, just so we can identify our character. So over here, let's grab that tag component. So the Rukanka character. And then for actually modifying the parameters, we grab a dynamic buffer, and it's going to be of type animator controller parameter component. Yep, this is the type. This is the special type that stores each animator parameter. And all the parameters in the animator, all of those are stored over here in a dynamic buffer. So let's do a for each query on this. So just a quick for each on the ref RO of our Rukanka character, and then the dynamic buffer of our type for the animator controller parameter. Tip here's our nice for each. Again, if you don't know what any of this code means, if so, then check out my free dots course. In there, I explain all of this in detail from start to finish. Tip here we have our nice querying. We've got our character, we've got the dynamic buffer. And over here for testing, let's just test for a key input. So just a simple, let's get key down of some kind of key. Let's say the T key. When this one happens, let's swap out a parameter. So for that, let's go inside our animator controller on the dynamic buffer and let's get the element. Let's use element at. Importantly, over here for this function, this one returns a ref, so let's make sure to use that. So the element at, then it takes in an index. So the index is going to be the order over here defined in the animator. So right now we just have one, so this one is on index zero. So let's grab on index zero and let's grab it with a ref. And this one's going to return our animator controller parameter component. Tip just like this, and now we can easily modify it. So we just go inside that one. In this case, set the bool value, because this one actually has all the values that you expect. We've got in, float, bool, and so on. So let's modify the bool value. On this one, let's set it to true. And then on a different input, on this one, let's just set it to false. So yep, that should do it, super simple. Let's save. And yep, there's our dots character animated. It's playing the first animation. Now I press the T key. And if there you go, now it is playing the other different animation. Now I'll play the other key. And if there you go, back into that animation. All right, awesome. So yep, here we have a nice character with an animator working entirely inside a dot subscene. This character is an entire entity. We can easily modify the parameters to play any animation we want. So this is basically all we need. And yep, again, all of it working directly inside dots. Now for a fun stress test, here I have a scene with 500 game object animators. We can see it's running at about 100 frames per second. Looking over here on the profile, we can see what is happening. So the animator is updating, the skin mesh is updating and so on. And then here we have a different stress test. These are all dots animators. And if we look in the stats, we can see, yep, this one is running at 220 FPS. And if we look here in the profiler, we can see, first of all, we can see a ton of green, meaning we are using a ton of bars, so that's awesome. We can see over here in the beginning, this Rukanka system, that one is taking 0.153 milliseconds. And then this one for doing the deformations, this one is taking 0.5 milliseconds. So up here we have a ton of characters, all animated, all animated directly inside a dots world. These are all entities. The whole thing runs super fast and works great. All right, awesome. So yep, that's how easy this has to use. Playing animations and modifying parameters, super easy. But beyond simple animations, this one also has a ton more features. We can go over here inside packages and then down here we have the nice docs. So here, this is a super detailed PDF with all kinds of information you might want. It has IK support, so you can do all kinds of interesting inverse kinematics. Again, all of it working directly inside dots. Then it also integrates easily with netcode for entities out of the box. It also has a bunch of samples to show all of those things in action. And the docs also have a nice feature parity table. So you can see all of the features that are included in the normal mechanism system and the ones in Rukanka. And you can see how most of the match, most of the things are actually supported. So yep, this asset is pretty great, very easy to use. It's a great option for adding animations to your dots project. It's on sale right now with the Black Friday sale, so if you want it, definitely get it quickly. And the other big thing missing in dots is navigation or pathfinding. So yeah, for that, here we have the agents navigation package. This one actually works on top of the Unity AI navigation package. This is actually something that I've had on my to-do list to cover for ages. They did a pretty big upgrade to their navigation package a few months ago. Thankfully, it's actually pretty easy to use. So here in my demo scene, let's set it up. So I prepared a simple map, like I literally just made a plane and then a bunch of cubes on top. Now for our character, we just need to add a bunch of components in order to make it actually support navigation. And to see those components, we can actually just right click over here. Then let's go under AI and let's construct a new agent cylinder. And if those are the two main components we need to have, so we need an agent and the agent cylinder shape. So instead of using just this normal cylinder, let's apply those over here. So let's copy the agent component. Let's paste it over here and the agent cylinder shape. 
and also paste it over here. If there it is, we have the two basic components. Now let's make a simple script to learn how we can actually tell this to go somewhere. So let's construct a brand new, a simple mono behavior script, call it agent set destination. And over here, let's do something pretty simple. We just do a private void awake. And on awake, let's get a component, component of type agent authoring. So yep, this is the component that we want. And over here, we can call set destination. And this one takes in some kind of target. So let's actually expose a transform. So let's do a serialized field of private transform of the target transform. And then over here, the destination is simply going to be this one dot position. Okay, yep. So now here, let's just go over there. Let's attach our brand new component and let's create an empty transform. So just an empty target. Let's reset it and let's put it, let's say over there. So yep, let's drag it. And now our character should be able to move over there. Let's do a quick test. And if there it is, there's the character moving, but it is not avoiding wall. So it is not actually using pathfinding. So let's add pathfinding and make this into a dots entity. So first we're making it into a dots entity, just drag it inside the dots subscene. Yep, there it is. Now it's an entity. Then for setting the target on the entity, we do it through this component, the agent body. So I made this system. So on update, it just cycles through all the agent bodies. And then over here, just checks if the mouse button is down. If so, then tells the entity, tells the agent to go towards the mouse position. By the way, I covered this class, the mouse 3D and how to get the mouse worm position. I covered that in a different tutorial. So yep, this should tell the agents to go towards the mouse position. So right now, if I click and if there you go, it does go there, but again, still without any kind of pathfinding. So let's solve that. First thing we need is a nav mesh surface. So let's right click over here, go inside AI and let's create a new nav mesh surface. And if this is the way that the new AI navigation package works, basically you create this component and over here we have all kinds of settings. So we can set the agent type, the area and so on. We can set it to use geometry, include all objects, layers and so on. For a quick test, just the basic defaults will probably work. So let's go ahead and click on bake. And if there it is, right away we can see the nav mesh has indeed been correctly baked. So we can see the walkable areas over there. And that also made the ones on top of this wonkable. Doesn't really matter, but yep. So now back in our unit, in order to make it follow that, let's just go ahead and add some components. Let's add the agent nav mesh pathing. Then let's also add the agent collider just to add collision avoidance. And if just like that, it should be working. Again, the only code we need is over here, just querying for this component, the agent body and setting it to our destination. So if we test like this, so here we are. And if I click and there you go, and let's see any of it does indeed avoid that one. So it does go towards the target destination whilst going through the nav mesh, so whilst avoiding any objects. All right, awesome. Then here we have different tests with a bunch of entities, and again, same code. So they go somewhere, they all avoid the walls, they go towards there, and again, they have collision avoidance, so they don't actually bunch up. They all move together, and yep, they all reach the final destination. Again, these are all entities, and these are all following nav mesh pathfinding. So the pathfinding itself, that one is using Unity's nav mesh. As far as I know, that one is not using dots at all. So that one is just normal mono behavior C sharp code, but it does mean that you can use that navigation package. You can use Unity's normal nav mesh and make it work with entities. If you need insanely fast pathfinding, then one asset that I highly recommend is always the ASAR pathfinding project. And this asset over here does have an integration with that one. So you can basically use that one to calculate the path super fast and then use this one over here, the agent navigation in order to move your entities alongside that path. And if you want to have tons of units, then this asset actually has an extension. It's agents navigation crowds. This one works on top of the usual agents navigation. And like name implies, this one helps you add giant crowds that do pathfinding super quickly. The main difference is this one is using flow field pathfinding as opposed to the usual ASAR pathfinding. So it's actually the same algorithm that I cover in detail in my dots course. This algorithm is really great when you have tons of units all going to similar destinations. For using this, it is very much in the same way, just with a special different component. So yep, here are two really awesome super performance assets. Go ahead and get them quickly while the Cyber Week sale is active and check out all the other assets on sale. If you need anything for your games, then now is a great time to get it. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.